So, hello and welcome to lesson 5 in our study of Python programming language in scientific computing 2. So, uh, in this video, we are going to discuss some useful functions from the collection data types that we learned in the fourth lesson, alright? The list in the two posts and the rest that we did learn. So, we will, we are going to go through some of the useful functions such as learn, append, index, pop, remove, insert, del, clear, and the rest, okay? So, let's talk about the learn function. So, the learn function takes a single data item as its argument and retains the length of the item as an integer. So, when your argument is a string, the number of alphabet that make up that string will be counted. And the space in between the words is also counted. And since when your argument is a list, then the number of items in the list will be counted and the answer written as an integer. By now, you should know what a string is and what a list is. Okay. So, hmm, come here. So, an example, right? I was like, learn of what ring of. So, you determine ring of is made up of eight characters. The learn of God is good, it will tell me it is 11 characters. Then I create a list called Days of Week, where I have Sunday, Monday to Saturday. And it will tell me that the items in the list, Days of the Week, is what? Seven. Let's illustrate some here. So. So, learn of I love God will tell me that I love God is made up of 14 characters. It counts the space. So, let's see. You can see we have I is 1. The space here is 2. Then 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. You can count that and see. And when I have a list, all right, let's see. So I have this list. So it will tell me that I have 10 members in the what list, 10 items in the list. Okay, so that's the learn function. It's very, very important. Okay. So um the learn function you can also use it on tuples, right? So when you have a tuple, here we had a tuple called cubes. We had one, eight, twenty seven, and eighty one. So when you go to learn of what the cubes, so we have four items in the what. Um, in the tuple called what um, cubes, okay. So we have something we call the append function. So the append function adds an element at the end of the list. Listen to it. The append method adds an element at the end of the list. So for instance, let's say you are working with a record for a class in a school, and the class has five girls. If a sixth girl is enrolled in a class, what will you have to do? What you will have to do is to update the list by adding a seed girl's name on the list, right? So in Python, the append the append method can help us to do this. So an example is we have a list, and the list contains girls in math five, right? So the girls in math five, they are Priscilla, Ruth, Eunice, Dockers, Elizabeth, right? So you can see them here. Then Let's say a seed girl called Mabel has been enrolled into the class. So this is how we will use the append method to update the list. So we just go to the variable name containing the list. It is what girls. Then we'll do dot append. We open parentheses, close parentheses. What do we want to add? We want to add what Mabel. Then we add it. So after doing that, now when we call the variable girls, we will see that Mabel has been added towards the class, the girls in math five. We can see that here. So let's illustrate it again here. So you can see here I had 10 numbers here. So let's say I want to add a different number, maybe 35. So I'll be like a dot append. Then what do I want to add? 35. But you see, 35 is not a string, so I don't put it inside a quote, right? So now when I call A, you realize that 35 has been added here. Hope you get that. So that's how we use the append method. It's very, very interesting and simple. So we have what we call the index method. 
So the index method retains the index of the first element with the specified value. So the index method is normally used to find the i place of a character in a list. So let's illustrate it here. So you see we have name. The name is written of Boido Okran, right? So I go to name.index b. So what it means is that the character b, what is it place here? So you can see Python starts the place with what? Zero. So R here will be zero. So it will be zero. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. So the index of what B is 9, then it will retain it for you. So we use that to fetch the index of what a number, right? Then we have the pop method. So the pop method is used for deleting an item in a list. Okay. So we have a list called names of Python gurus. Okay. Then we have Oliver, hey, Oliver, yeah, Python guru, that's cool. Then we have Tracy, Magdalene, Girlfriend, Presla, Nawus. Wow, these people are Python gurus. Okay, so we can assess the zero person in the list, right? So you go to names of list, then square bracket zero. That means that you should find you the zero person, like the index of the zero person in the list, and that's Oliver. So you see, Oliver came out, right? Then now we want to delete the name of Tracy from the list because we have realized that no, Tracy is not a Python guru, so he has to leave. So what we do is that to be the name, like the variable name containing the list, which is names of Python gurus, then dot pop. Then the pop, the argument it takes is that it takes the index of the element that you want to or delete. So you can see that Oliver is zero, so Tracy is definitely one. So dot pop of one. Then it will tell you tracing. So now if you should go to names of Python gurus, you realize that Tracy is nowhere to be found. She has been taken away from the list. So this is how we use the pop method to update our list. So for instance, you have a list containing the names of students in a class. One student has stopped the school. You can just use the pop method to remove that student's name from the list. Okay. So you should be practicing this. So don't just follow. Be practicing them in your console. Okay. Right, so we have the remove method. So the remove method searches for the given element in the list and removes the first matching element. Okay, so the syntax is the name of the list dot remove, then the element you want to remove. So you see here, I have names, the names I have Randolph, Oliver, Aram, Prince, and Randolph again, right? And I want to remove one of the Randolphs because I have a duplicate of it. So I can use the remove method to do that. But the remove method will search for the given element in the list and remove the first matching element. So you see when I go to name does remove Randolph. When it searches the list, there's a first matching element it will find. So it will remove that. And now when I call names, you realize that Oliver, Aaron, and Prince and Randolph come out without what? The first Randolph. It has been removed from the list. Okay. So it says note. If the element does the argument pass to the list. Pass to the remove method doesn't exist. Value error exception is shown. Okay. Then we have the insert method. So the insert method inserts an element to the list at a given index. So you know we can use the append to add an element to the list, but with the append, it always asks it at the end of the list. Okay. But for the insert, we can specify the particular location we want to add it by using the index. Okay. So the syntax of the insert method is less dot insert then index so the index and the element you want to insert okay so the list the insert has two parameters right it takes two parameters so index that's the position when an element needs to be inserted an element there's the element to be inserted in the list right so you could see i have a list right containing a 27 and 81 right and I want to so as I say, set containing the cubes of numbers two, three, four. Right, so I want to insert sixty-four in between twenty seven and eighty one. So you see the index for eight is zero. This is one, this is two. So if I want to insert something here, that thing's index has to be two. So it will be S dot insert two. So that's the index where I want the things to be placed. Okay. And what I want to add to the list is 64. So now if I do that and I call X, you realize that I have 8, 
0.27 please do all this in your console okay so that you appreciate what we are doing they say it's notes there are other methods such as clear copy count reverse sort extend and the rest that you can read on okay so you let me do a last thing in my python console So I'm creating a list called names. Let me write some names inside. Right, so you can see I have a list called Ikea, Amma, Crane Mother, Salima, Vida, right? So maybe I have a list and I want to sort it out. So you can use the sort function. So so the sort function will sort the name in alphabetical order. So from a to z okay so if i should now call the names so you can now it has been sorted in all alphabetical order so ikea comes um ama comes then queen mother comes salima comes and vida comes okay already the name was already in um that form okay so So I think this example will make you appreciate it. So we have Zoto, Ama, Babana, and Eric. So names dot sort. So now you can see that it has arranged it in words from A to Z for you. So we have Ama first, Babana, Eric, and Zoto. So you can also arrange it from Z to A. And with that one, we use something like this. So now you can see it has arranged from what Zoto, Eric, Babana to Ama. So these are some of the functions that you can use or the methods on the list, okay? And yeah, that's it. So see you in the next video. We are beginning to write useful codes now, okay? I'll see you in the next video.